What's good everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we are starting a new series of sorts. It will be an ongoing series just like the Pokemon Wi-Fi battles whenever they show up. Um, today we are we are playing Robot Rumble 2 or RR Square or if you want to say it, it's a game built by someone in the community for the community. If you want to scratch your off-season combat robotics battle bots itch, um, Here's a game for you. But this game is still in development. There's still some bugs and gremlins that gets updated periodically. Uh, download links and whatnot will be in the Discord. I'll leave the Discord link down below and the YouTube link down below. So you can check those out. But if you want to download the game itself, uh, please check the Discord because YouTube will not let me put such hefty links on the thing for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, yeah, as you can see, and we're going to go through what we're going to be calling Builder Blocks. Basically, it's going to be robots that are going to be submitted in these tournaments. And these tournaments are powered by Parsec. And you play with people across the world in these tournaments and whatnot. Again, most of these info is found in the Discord, which again will be found in the description below. Check out the Discord. It is a great community. It is great fun. There's very knowledgeable people. This game, if you're interested in STEM or know anyone interested in STEM like stuff, I say this is a good game. I, mean, I don't have a STEM background. I'm a biology major. Um, I think this is a good thing for STEM. Like you gotta learn how to make your chassis. You gotta learn how to wire things. How to not overvolt motors. How to properly um, torque or torque your motors. I don't know what the proper term. Set your motors. So that your robot can drive fast, or drive slow, and the pushing power have reliability. Your armor material matters, weight matters. Again, you're only limited in the heavyweight division to 110 kilograms or 250 pounds if you watch BattleBots, uh, Robot Wars, King of Bots, whatever. All these robots, you know, I think this is a good place to start. And yeah, again, check it out. It's a great game and it's a lot of great fun. As you can see, you can battle. You can build championship. It's not been developed yet, from what I can gather. That's why it's great up uh, settings and it's a game. Today we're going to be again doing a builder vlog for one of the upcoming tournaments as well. So let's just go into the workshop today. Uh, as you can see, oh, the game does take a while to load. Um, yeah, as you can see, not responding. It does have these little issues here. Don't worry, it'll load. It'll load. It'll load. As you can see, you see uh, some of my robots at the top, but there's also a lot of reps here. Uh, as you can see, there is, what is there? this is like Robot Wars, they're atomic. So you'll hear the sound effects in the background. Sorry if it's a little loud, I can't control that. Atomic or Classic Robot Wars. Um, there's Apocalypse and the Reboot Robot Wars. Uh, let's see, where's another one? Behemoth. Behemoth, black and, uh, black and yellow robot with a lifting scoop. See from BattleBots, you see former champion now Bite Force has been made. Uh, let's see, former champion. Where did they go? Endgame, former champion Endgame is in this game as well as a rep pack, so you have to find the link and download it. It's somewhere in the Discord again. Uh, so feel free again, check out the Discord link down below to get all this stuff and get more information. I'm still a relative rookie at this game uh, myself. I have not won a single tournament yet. You can see I have a bunch of my robots here. Uh, right after Yeti, I have a bunch of my robots here. And so today we are going to look at... Where did it go? We're going to check out Wallop. So Wallop here is my recent entry to a recent tournament coming up in the May, the 28th of May, 29th of May, depending on how far we go. This is its anti-horizontal setup here. As you can see it's a big powerful vertical disc spinner with a very very thick wedge. So let's go over some of the materials here. So you see I have this like 13 pound feeder wedge made out of Hardox AR500 interchangeably. It's meant to pick up the spinners and feed it to this Hardox disc, this 21, 22 pound spinning disc. Uh, with the tooth and just give them one hell of a wallop. Uh, the whole, all the armor is made out of titanium. As you can see, these highest armor is out of aluminum. 
top is UHMW, which is a type of plastic. HDP, uh, fun fact for you, is the stuff made out of the cream boards. So it's high density polyethylene plastic. It's very, very hard stuff, you know? You're cutting your meat, you're cutting your veggies on that, you know? Sometimes you get, you know, like the butcher knives, right? And you're slamming the heck out of your meat with it to tenderize your meat and to like get through the tough cut. That's what the HDPE is made out of. But we're using UHMW, slightly heavier um, plastic armor. On the side, we have ablative aluminum armor. If it's hit on the side, I put this nail down, but it's meant to just shatter off when it gets hit. And self writing side is also made out of aluminum, just so we don't get stranded on our sides. Uh, we have titanium side plate armor, titanium back armor. Um, yeah, so it's a very sturdy robot. What's the base plate? Yeah. Base plate is also, oh, you know, that's not it, that's our little tongue. Our base plate is titanium as well. Yeah, Hardox is the thing holding the, the stuff together, the two chassis together. There's a hole in the robot, as you can see. That's why there's the disc here, it spins up uh, through this little hole. Um, it's powered by a, how do you pronounce this? Sound? This Mott Energy Motor. With a solenoid switch. So here's what I mean with the stem stuff. You see how to wire it to a receiver and whatnot. So it does teach you some stem, and you can see there's like a voltage and a current um, limitations here. So you gotta make sure you don't overvolt or overamp your motors. You can see the solenoid switch here. I can't adjust it, so you know whatever. But as you can see, another better better example is this drive uh, motor. You can see it's 450, right? 300 amp peak, but uh, 450 um, and I think I can get away with this is because I'm not over volting my motors so yeah it's quite good it's quite good and you know battery hub I don't really know the difference between battery hubs and just you know batteries in a series and whatnot I don't know that and I'm not a physics major so if you can answer that for me down below that's deeply appreciated now let's test out the telemetry of these things as you can see, that's not Sonic the Hedgehog, that's just powering up the robot. As you can see, look, it moves forward, backward, left, right. It's relatively quick. Oh, sorry, hit the wall. Now let's test up the spin up time on this machine. So as you can see, right, I have my statistics here, right? There's the try, this is the spinner. We can go down here. You can see it's 22.3 pounds or kilograms. And let's spin it up. You might hear the death hum of the motor. So let's just spin it up here. As you can see, it's uh, as you can see, it's spent up to the theoretical help of 43,000 kilojoules. I don't know why it's a 250. I mean, max speed is 250 miles per hour, but it was 248 when I submitted the thing. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a you know, hopefully that passes through legality. Um, but as you can see, the motor doesn't stop spinning. So I'll like flip the robot over, right? See if it'll self right. To watch or if I spun it out you can see the robot self right it, it the motor does not stop if you remember death row from 2018 battle bots like that the spinner does not stop the testing it has not stopped it's not broke it kept spinning it keeps on picking you can see it's polycarb top armor here i really like the john reed aesthetic of the polycarb for like beta and terahertz that's why there's polycarb blue polycarb i should mention this is the second iteration of wallop the first iteration of wallop was not good the spinner was too high and too tall and not really well armored so this second iteration you can call it budget cobalt if you want or budget tungsten whichever version you prefer but hey, this robot can deliver a nice wallet with this disc spinner. So let's go back and show you the fork configuration. This is what I like to call the fork em up configuration. Okay, as you can see, we have our fork em up configuration. Not completely redesigned, um, but it is now less armor, more offensive, hopefully low to the ground. Uh, as you can see, I mean, nothing has changed besides new bar, different fur in the back. And different uh, front configuration. So as you can see, I have this very good feeder wedge. Uh, hopefully, uh, it scrapes the ground and it can help 
feed into this bar spinner here. It's almost 30 pound bar spinner. That one was 22. This one's about 30. Same properties. It's made out of hard ox. It's 27 mils thick of hard ox. So it's gonna be one hell of a hit. It's a bar spinner, not a disc, but it still hits really, really hard. And also have these forks made out of hard ox as well. So it's meant to pull a guitar, for example, right? Or drum spinners, right? Or uh, with the three king spinners, it's meant to take those hits and pop them up and set it up for the big bar spinner here to just give them a nice old wallop. Nice old wallop. Um, other than that, everything else is the same. So I just rearranged it to have a different front configuration. The bar again will spin up and will not stop spinning. It's like the disc spinner. It's very deadly. Uh, I should also, oh yeah, that's right. This is made out of titanium, not hard ox. Remember the other one was like full on 11 pounds of armor for hard ox. So it's, you know, different configuration meant for different opponents. It's still very tough to beat. And I think this will do well. I legit think this will do well. If it does well, first we'll find out. I don't know the answers yet either. It's not till May 28th, May 29th. We'll see how we do. And hopefully there are, you know, maybe future upgrades. Like already I'm thinking maybe I need like a bigger biting bar. Or like the disc needs a little bigger bite or something. Of course those are all in time um, as we see. But currently I think this robot can do really well and hopefully it will and let's show you the telemetry so you can see right it's scraping the ground um it's, it's very careful uh let's see, go here the bar is officially almost 30 pounds so it's like 29.7 and there's the the theoretical output let's see if it goes higher So it's been at 250 miles per hour, spins up at about 50,000 kilojoules of it, 50,000 joules of energy, not kilojoules, joules of energy. So plus the forward momentum and the, the ability of the wedge and forks to like set it up perfectly for a nice hit. I think it's going to do really well. It's going to be a one heck of a wallet. With that being said though, this will be the end of today's Builder Vlogs. I have tons more coming on the way with other robots that I have made. I don't know how we're gonna do this. I think I'm gonna do the tournament fights and plans of up, uh, plans of upgrades when they come, and if I get permission to record those battles as well. But yes, stay tuned to the channel. If you like Pokemon content? I also have Pokemon content, Wi-Fi battles as well. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated. But nonetheless, um, have a great day, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.